Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the sixth video in the STM32 timer series, and today we will continue with another application of the timer synchronization. In the previous video we saw how the master timer can control the start of the counter of the slave timer, by using the slave mode along with the trigger mode. There was however a restriction. The slave counter could start only when the master counter overflows. Today we will see how the master timer can issue a trigger signal, when it reaches a predefined value, and by making use of this feature, we will generate a three-phase PWM signal. Basically the signal will be generated when the counter reaches 33% of its value. This is the point where the timer 2 will start counting, and it will also generate a signal when it reaches 33% of its value. Then the timer 3 will start counting. Since all the timers will have the same frequency and duty, we will be able to generate 3 PWM signals, which will be 120 degrees out of phase with each other. Here you can see the internal trigger connection, which you can find in the reference manual of your controller. This is the table for F446RE controller. You can see the timer 2 can be controlled by timer 1, by using the ITR0 signal. Similarly, the timer 3 can be controlled by the timer 2, by using the ITR1 signal. This table might be different for your controller, so you must look in the reference manual of your controller. This is the picture I took from one of the ST's videos. Here you can see how this whole system will work. Basically the timer 1 will generate a PWM signal, and when the counter reaches the 33% of its value, its output compare signal will go high. This is where the ITR0 signal will be issued, and the timer 2 will start counting from this point. When the timer 2's counter reaches 33% of its value, its output compare signal will also go high. And this is the point where the timer 2 will generate the ITR1 signal, and the timer 3 will start counting from this point. Let's start the cube IDE and create a new project. I am using the Nucleo F446RE controller. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Let's set up the clocks first. I am selecting the external crystal to provide the clock. The board has 8 MHz crystal on it, and I want to run the system at 90 MHz frequency. I am choosing 90 because that's the maximum clock at which the APB1 timer clock can run at. And I want both the APB buses to run at the same frequency, so that we could use the same configuration for all three timers. Let's configure the timers now. Timer 1 is going to be the master for timer 2. Here we will generate the PWM signal on channel 1. Also output compare with no output on channel 2, as this will be used for the internal trigger. Let's configure the PWM frequency and duty cycle. The timer is running at 90 MHz, so a prescaler of 90 will bring down the frequency to 1 MHz. Then the auto reload of 10,000 will further reduce the frequency to 100 Hz. Now for the trigger event selection, we will go with the output compare for channel 2. This OC2 ref is used as the trigger signal, and it will trigger the timer 2. Here I am setting the PWM signal duty cycle at 40%. For the output compare, change the mode to active level on match. This will basically activate the signal once the counter value matches the compare value. And this compare value, we will set it at 33% of the auto reload value. This is it for the timer 1, let's configure the timer 2 now. Timer 2 will act as a slave for timer 1, and master for timer 3. We will use the trigger mode, so that the counter starts counting once the ITR0 signal is received by the timer. The rest of the configuration is exactly the same as the timer 1. So basically the timer 2 counter will start upon receiving the signal from the timer 1. 
Once the counter reaches 33% of the auto reload value, the output compare signal will go high, which will generate the ITR1 event. And now we will configure the timer 3, which is a slave to the timer 2, and can be controlled by using the ITR1 trigger. We don't need to generate the output compare for timer 3, and the rest of the configuration is the same as that of the other timers. Here these three PWM output pins are connected to the logic analyzer. Let's save the project to generate the code. There is not much in the coding part, we just have to start the PWM for channel 1, and output compare for channel 2. We will only enable the PWM for timer 3, as we have not set the output compare for this. That's it for the code part, let's build and flash it to the board. I am using the logic analyzer to see the output of the PWM. Let me reset the board once. We will start at the first rising edge of the timer 1 output. I am setting two more markers for the timer 2 and 3. Now in the measurement, set the first marker as the T0. You can see the timestamps of the other markers compared to the first one. Note that all three PWM have the same frequency of 100 Hz, so the period is 10 milliseconds. Now you can see the second PWM starts at 3.3 milliseconds, and the third one starts at 6.6 .6 milliseconds. If you convert this time to angles, you could observe the 120 degrees phase difference between these waves. This phase difference will remain constant, so if you add more markers anywhere on the waves, you could still see the same time difference between them. So we saw how to generate a three-phase PWM signal using the timer synchronization technique. I hope you understood the process. I will continue the timer series, and in the next video we will see how to cascade the timers, so that we can make two 16-bit timers to behave as a single 32-bit timer. This is it for today. The link to download the code is in the description below. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.